Hello, everyone. Just a quick word from your friendly editor slash husband. For all of you who listen to So I'm Watching This Show and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android devices. I use the app and love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure you set so I'm watching the show as a favorite so you don't miss any new episodes. Again, the app is Podcast Republic, available on your Android device. Thanks! Hey, hello everybody. I am Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is So I'm Watching This Show. Uh, On today's episode, we're going to talk about probably a couple things. It's probably going to be a more casual episode. We're going to catch up a little bit. You stop saying that. We say that every episode. Just that it's going to be more casual? Yeah. I don't know. I mean... Every single episode, we're like, this is going to just be like a little chit-chat. Like, that's new. I mean, sometimes I'm like, buckle up, motherfuckers. I've got some shit to say. <laughs> that's, that's true. Sometimes you are like so, that. So then I'll 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 switch. And from now on, when I've got shit to say, I'm going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> buckle up, motherfuckers. Strap your tits in, because this is about <laughs> to get wild. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess, I mean, it, it's hard to isolate and cut out, but it's it's me easing myself in. I still, even though, you know, we're two years in, I still sometimes when I'm just starting, I'm like, this is weird. People are going to be listening to this. <laughs> where's and my two Where's my two, where's my two mugs? mugs? <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just sort of my way of like easing into to talking. But well, you and me haven't really talked in like two weeks. I mean, and, and the couple times that we did, it was just talking about, you know, Glow and the boys. A specific thing, yeah. So I've been at my parents' house taking care of my mom. She's in recovery for the month of August. And so, uh, yeah. But, no, we were going to talk about a few things. And the primarily, I wanted to do something for our dear, dear, dear friend, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. It is her birthday yesterday. <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was the actual day. I know I'm a shit friend and oh. I don't know her birthday. We've done this apparently several times. <laughs> Happy late birthday, Rachel. <laughs> I always think it's the 27th and But it's the 26th. Yeah. Okay. I mean to be fair, I do the same thing with my brother's birthday, so it's not a real like right. Fuck. I mean, I think Jen's birthday is February 28th and it's January 29th. So <laughs> <laughs> It took me like 10 years to get there, but so, yeah, and I was trying to think of something fun we could do, and so I very casually slipped into conversation. I was like, what's your favorite movie? And so she told me a couple <laughs> movies, and I was like, bam, we just talked about League of Their Own. We did. And so, and only now am I thinking this might backfire a little bit, because I wanted to make her happy, and... <laughs> us talking. To us yeah. talking about her favorite movie <laughs> might be kind of a dick move. <laughs> I hope that that is not the case. But I do want to say, and we want to get this out there, that we have been trying very hard to put Buffy and Teen Wolf back on our schedules. We really have. We know that that's like people <laughs> people started following us because of those things. And they are coming back. We're just busy. And so in the next couple of weeks, definitely in the month of September, we're going to have Buffy season three, part two. And... Uh, all things, if all things go smoothly, Rachel will be joining us for that. Yes, she and will. So she's very excited, and she's never done this before, so she's also kind of nervous. But yeah, wow. We'll get her two <laughs> coffee mugs too. <laughs> so yeah, well, I hope that this is nice and nice because I haven't told her that we were doing this. But oh, I just assumed she knew. Oh no, no, it was actually okay. very difficult for me to not text her while we were watching it. <gasps> Happy surprise! Uh-huh. Oh well, I was I was talking about it yesterday. To on who? Twitter. Oh. God damn it, Kristen. You didn't tell me not to. <laughs> I thought it was a given. Did she? Sorry. She might not. Well, it's close enough. It's fine. It's whatever. It's whatever. It's just ruined us all. <laughs> <laughs> well, since no. we already didn't know her actual birth date, I think it's already <laughs> ruined. Okay. So, anyways. No, I was really... Well, I wasn't excited. I was dragging my feet a little bit. 
was excited. We'll go with it. I was excited to finally see the movie because it's a movie that you hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of talking about it because we had just watched Gina Davis on season three of Glow. And Mm -hmm. her body of work came up and you had mentioned it. Haven't you kind of wanted me to watch this for a while? There was nothing like pressing about it, but... I, it's just a movie that I love, so... Mm. So, so yeah. you have seen this several times, or...? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, a way a lot of times. I don't... When I was sitting down watching it, I, part of me was kind of like, I don't know how I managed to avoid this. It, <laughs> it feels like it should have been... Like, I should have seen it. I, I guess, cut to the chase, I really enjoyed it. Yay! Uh, I was dragging my feet a little bit, because I don't love older movies... Even though some of my favorite movies are older movies, but it's like, I, I just don't love, I don't like feeling like I have a chore to do. And yeah. I don't love sport movies. Like, I'm just not, I don't care about sports. And so there was a part of me that was like, eh. Well, you like Glow. Uh, yes. And <laughs> this was actually a lot like Glow. Did you yeah, notice ladies, that watching it? Yeah, ladies sports. When it's like not a ladies sport to begin with. And especially in the beginning when they were trying to audition them and we meet Oh, God. Well, I just watched this afternoon. Marla? Because yeah. it's Megan Kavanaugh. I fucking love Megan Kavanaugh. Uh-huh. I was so excited when I saw it was her. But when we meet Marla and Don Lovitz was like, like, ah, well, get rid of it. I was like, well, <laughs> I was like, you only I was like, if we learned anything from Glow, I was like, you only need like three really hot ones. <laughs> I yeah. was like, and Precisely. the rest of them can just kind of be filler. <laughs> It's another one of those movies that I like don't remember the first time I saw it and and I've seen it so many times that it mm-hmm. all kind of bleeds together but I like I just remember it for so long and it was always something that I loved so much cuz it's like it's funny but it's also emotional and it's also like a little bit crude but it's like in a way yeah. that a, that like a 12-year-old can watch yeah, I like my actual last note is I just said, man, there is a lot going on in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> I also do love Penny Marshall and she's the director. Mm-hmm. We start and end with that sister like rivalry mm-hmm. story. But you know, within that we have feminism and then it's it's a period piece, so it's like different that way and there's a whole like country versus city clash and then there's world war ii and it's mm-hmm. like i was like there was a lot of things happening and it's it's a two hour and you know a couple minute movie and it not in a bad way but it felt a little bit longer to me i was like man we're covering a lot of ground i like, was gonna say i to me it doesn't it doesn't feel long but it feels vast yeah it does a lot it doesn't feel longer than it needs to be which Mm -hmm. is like it like it doesn't drag but it feels vast yeah and because there was a part of me that you know going into it i was like there's so many people like so many characters just reading the opening credits and stuff and i was sort of like i hope they get enough material and i mean a lot of them don't have these grand sweeping arcs but Mm -hmm. they certainly do i remember I remember being a kid, and I've said a couple times before that, like, because this was 92, so I was seven, and Madonna was the first understanding I had of celebrity, like, outside of Mickey Mouse, you know what I mean? Okay. And so I remember having an understanding that she was famous, and she did stuff, and... I, at a certain point, found out she was in this movie. And so it became a little bit of a fascination for me because I wanted to see it because I, I wanted to see her. And mm-hmm. I I knew her from Dick Tracy. And I mean, that's a funny comparison because Dick Tracy is far more mature than this yeah. movie is. <laughs> but I only know, I realized as I was saying it, I was like, I only know Dick Tracy because when I was five years old, I did a dance routine to one of the Madonna songs. And... So that's why I know it. But regardless, and I remember seeking this movie out at like seven, kind of wanting to see it. And I was like at a friend's house and we were going to watch it. And I was like, I wanted to see it because Madonna was in it. And my friend Courtney like showed me and I was like, yeah, but which one is she? And she pointed to her Mm -hmm. and she had brown hair hair. and I lost (laughs) all interest in the movie whatsoever. (laughs) That sounds right. (laughs) Does that check? (laughs) And there was a part of me that was just kind of like, oh, never mind. But because I think she looks so good with the brown hair now, especially she does. And there's a there was a part of me that it was like, yeah, I was like familiar with elements of this movie. 
And one of them was that Madonna was in it. So going into it now, there was a part of me that was kind of like, what is this even going to be like? Mm -hmm. And she's she's definitely one of the bigger roles. She's like one of there's kind of like two tiers of girls. Yeah. And she's one of the bigger ones. But she is frequently paired with. Rosie O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. And I thought they were really great. I thought they were really funny. And I think a lot of it, I think a lot of it translated. A lot of it was, was still funny and still enjoyable. And I thought she was pretty great. You, you've made a case for her as an actress in the past. Yeah. I mean, she's great in this and it's been ages since I saw Desperately Seeking Susan, but she's pretty good in that too. I've never thought she was a bad actor. I mean, I think Cher is better at mm, acting and mm-hmm. she's done more acting but i think madonna's great mm-hmm. it was really fun and you did mention something earlier when we were talking about it where you were like it's kind of crude and because i said earlier a little bit risque but mm-hmm. in a way that i think is like almost good for young people oh totally and- i was i meant it in like a, a good way like it's it's like a fun kind of crude like when she's when she's in confession, when Madonna's in confession, mm-hmm. and she the the priest just keeps <laughs> he drops dropping the Bible the twice Bible because <laughs> she's talking about all the crap she did, like that's hilarious <laughs> to me. It was funny two ways over because to me it was funny to me two ways over because it's a movie from the nineties mm-hmm. about the nineteen forties, mm-hmm. and it was funny to me how much of their like slang and you know crude talk and stuff was good. Yeah, and, and like, because I was like, oh, I knew a couple of the words. Oh God, what did he say? The um, I wrote it down. When he's like, use your head. That's the lump that's three feet above your ass. Oh yeah, I thought that was really good because I didn't know. <laughs> I had never seen. I mean, I obviously know the famous. There's no crying in baseball, but I don't uh-huh. think I had ever seen the scene because I oh, didn't know God. who he said it to. I didn't know which one of them it was. Yeah. <laughs> And it's so good. It's so funny. And especially at the end when he's like yelling at her again and he's just like the way he's just staring at her, trying uh-huh. to not be mean. Yeah. And try- <laughs> I love it. I love Tom Hanks is one of my favorite parts of this movie. And it is largely for, for his bombastic qualities, the no crying at baseball, the like scene where he's all super drunk and peeing all of that stuff, but I also, there's, like, a really sweet, like, tender relationship between him and Dottie that mm-hmm. goes through the whole thing, and that is, like, it's, like, a weird emotional backbone of this movie, even though they actually only share, like, two scenes, just the two of them, it's it's wonderful. Mm-hmm. And he's great in this as like a, <laughs> like an over the, or not even over the hill, but like a washed up injured ball player. It's like, it's really good. He he's such a good actor. I didn't know that about this movie that that he was like past his prime and a drunk. And mm-hmm. so when it happened, like when, when I sat down, I was kind of excited because I was like, "Ooh, it's like young, you know, hot Tom Hanks." And I didn't t- realize that he was going to be disgusting for half of the movie. <laughs> like, it was kind of like, "Oh God!" Like I was taken aback to say the yeah. least. Also, I like for the first five minutes. And I know who Lori Petty is. I actually kind of like her. But I was convinced for like the first five minutes she was Ellen DeGeneres. Oh, God, no. <laughs> and I was like, how is Ellen not in this? And I really wondered, I really didn't know where they were going with it. Because I didn't know that that sister relationship was going to was gonna be there either. Okay. And I mean, I guess in hindsight, I'm thinking about it right now. It's like I should have seen it coming because of that scene in the beginning Mm -hmm. where old Gina Davis is going to the reunion. Yeah. And the way that she talks to the grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. (laughs) But I like just didn't, I didn't know it was going to be there. And then as it was happening, I was sort of like, how are they going to resolve this? Because it like felt like it was leading to a like stronger conflict than I was anticipating Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know it's like the more that i'm thinking about it it's interesting i I did really like it i i I didn't i don't have you know a lot of very specific things to say about it but the more that i think about it i i did really i did really find it interesting i wrote down some notes while watching it one that i have is what the hell movie is john lovitz in (laughs) okay so apparently because i was reading some of the trivia last night apparently they 
a lot of his role was on the cutting room floor. And so in st- they ended up having to cut some stuff. And so instead, they just kept all of the meanest things he said. <laughs> So that's why it's a little weird, I think. I was going to say, what a weird tactic. <laughs> like, I like, well, the, apparently the audiences were like uproarious about it. Oh, okay. Whenever he, whenever they were like, it was just the mean stuff. So that's why they kept it. But I had forgotten how funny I thought he was like giving them shit about the cows and stuff. <laughs> it's like just all very funny. It's like this bully, this man just like wandered into the barn and just starts like pushing him about. I was like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of elements because I wrote down about the kid. What, what was his name? Which kid? The little kid, the one girl that brought her kid. Oh, Stillwell Angel? (laughs) Yeah. When he covered the bus driver's eyes. Yeah. And then and then the bus driver leaves and there's a scene where he straight like picks up a like handful of dirt and threw it at that lady. (laughs) Yeah. Right in her face. I was like, oh my God. Like (laughs) it was really weird. And oh yeah, there's a part like a little bit past the halfway point of this movie where it turns into West Side Story for five minutes. <laughs> Be- between the two baseball teams? No, the dancing. There's like, oh. a, they go to the bar and they're just yeah. straight, there's like straight up, like, like it's borderline a musical number. What? Because, <laughs> I mean, I I didn't know that Madonna could do that. I mean, I guess... It's just I, choreography. Yeah, I mean, I guess obviously she's a dancer, but it's some people... I don't know. It was it was like some some heavy duty swing dancing that I was like, oh, boy. So one of my favorite things that I read in the trivia is that where whatever town that they filmed most of the stuff in, she was so rude to everybody that they like still hate her there. Madonna. Yeah, that absolutely checks. <laughs> she was like such a bitch and she hated it. And she like even talked shit about it in like interviews afterwards and stuff. And so they like still hate her. <laughs> it's like today. That absolutely checks. Yeah. God, she's <laughs> I a thought pain. so too. I just thought it was hilarious. Oh man. Did you, did you clock Taya Leone? I did. <laughs> I did. Cause I haven't watched this in a, a handful of years now. And so I, I, the, whatever last time I was watching it, I don't think I was looking for her, but this time I saw her and I was like, that was fucking Taya Leone, wasn't it? And I went and found her and I was like, sure enough. It was her third role. <laughs> has one of the better montages in movie history when it's just them like going you know around playing baseball in different parts yeah it went on for a few minutes i definitely wish i had been introduced to this movie at a younger age i'm a little bit shocked that i wasn't i, yeah, I was gonna say i'm surprised your mom didn't have you watch this well she at hadn't some point. seen it she hadn't seen it she thought she had but when huh. we were watching it she was like i don't think i've ever seen this oh although my God. My dad apparently loves it. And he came out and sat that down and watched, checks, though. <laughs> watched the entire movie and was yeah. talking about what a classic it is and all this stuff. So considering that this is a lady movie, you know, about ladies directed mm-hmm. by a lady. And we were just talking about Gina Davis and her like ongoing oh, crusades, an extreme word. What am I? <laughs> Well, she like the, the empowerment of women, yeah, essentially, and, and her journey to get more representation and better representation and stuff. And she was talking about how you know every so often a movie will come along, you know, like The Hunger Games, like Wonder Woman. People will be like, "There, the problem's fixed," and she's like, "And it's not fixed." And so I feel like there's a, a strange parallel between, you know, well, not strange. It's a very obvious, it's very blatant on the nose parallel about how these women stepped into this job. It was a huge hit. Everybody loved it. And then after it was done, it was like, it just disappeared like it never happened. You know what yeah. I mean? Did you have like a favorite of the other girls? Uh, I, I would have to say Madonna and Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. Um, the one the one that couldn't read was really sweet. And- Surely, okay. I want to tell you, I was... I, I out of sort of nowhere I was like so deep in my feelings yesterday. <laughs> and Why? I don't know. I don't know. It was out of nowhere. Where, where did it come from, Kristen? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. But I was like watching it and I was like before they even got sorted in their teams, I had been like misting, like tearing up. And then like when she was up there and the other one came up and like read her name for her, I was like almost fully sobbing on the couch <laughs> because it was just like so cute. And I it just like and then it lasted sort of like the whole rest of the movie, especially mm-hmm. when you find out Betty Spaghetti's husband died. 
Oh God, yeah, it's awful. It ju- I was just like, this is one of those movies that m- turns me into a mess. And then when well, because you used forget. to be my playground starts playing at the end over the credits while all these <laughs> old ladies are playing baseball, it's ridiculous. Well, you you forget, you know, in the movie that because it's all fun and games until yeah. you know someone until loses an not. eye and. Yeah. <laughs> It's like you forget what they were doing. And I've been in a very self-reflective place lately. I I frequently am. That's kind of Mm -hmm. my resting zone. But I was like, man, there's so many things we take for granted. Like being able to read. You know, Mm, once once upon a time, that was not a given. (laughs) Well, because you got to think about it. That's like the early 40s. You would imagine, look at like... That's not as long ago as you think it is. And so you kind of are looking back and you're like, that feels weird that people still couldn't read like that people like adult people still couldn't read Mm -hmm. but it's like i know i mean a lot of these girls were from really poor towns and that still hadn't recovered from the depression Mm -hmm. which then it makes sense but it's just like wild to think about Mm -hmm. but and then that that was also that's one of my favorite parts when may is teaching shirley how to read the dirty book (laughs) and she's just like they're like may what are you what are you teaching her with and it's like it doesn't matter as long as she's She's learning and then she's like heaving white breasts or whatever milky milky white white breasts breasts. and she's like oh and then i i love that because she's like it gets really good after this the stable boy comes back in (laughs) and i just love it it's so 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 good that's the kind of stuff where I really appreciate Madonna because I think she's really good at comedy and it's one of the reasons why I wish she had acted more because I think she could have done pretty well as like cameos and com- more comedic roles. I, I was thinking while we were watching this movie, I was like, I, there's a part of me that wished she never got as big as she did. <laughs> Me, like musically? <laughs> well, she, I mean, most famous person in the world. Sure. Big. And because I feel like had she been a little bit, had she stayed a little bit more grounded throughout her entire career, we Mm -hmm. might have gotten way more from her in a way that like she grew into this can't be touched thing. Yeah, yeah. And it really fact, I mean, it really makes a lot of sense because one of my favorite quotes ever from a person, period, is from her. And she said, you know, I spent all of this time trying to get your attention. And now that I have it, I realize that I don't know what I want to (laughs) say. Right. It's like this movie, especially because I mean, I guess at this point she was probably about eight years into her career. Maybe maybe even was uh, I think True Blue was 84. Yeah. Yeah. But I I did think about that. And and it was also funny because like Rosie O'Donnell was like also she was past the big cast. Like she was lumped in with the featuring stuff. And I was like, oh, man, she's another one who. I feel like has acted or did act as much as she wanted to, but then sort of fell off and now she's more of like an activist, I guess, but her early stuff, because she's also in Sleepless in Seattle, which is one of my favorite Mm -hmm. movies. And she is so goddamn funny. I like, I can't get over it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's mostly just her delivery, which is like, cause sometimes the lines aren't even funny, but she, she finds what's funny in them. And I think that that's, like, such an interesting talent. And I so I, Doris in this movie is, like, one of my favorite mm-hmm. characters, too. The two of them, you're right. The pair of them are definitely, they're definitely the standouts, for mm-hmm. sure. I also thought it was it was weird. I mean, I guess it makes, it makes enough sense. But I thought it was kind of weird that Gina Davis was the only one that played her old, herself she old. She didn't. She didn't? No, they dubbed their voices. Oh, Okay. Okay. <laughs> I looked it up yesterday because it was one of the things that I could never remember. It's like every time I would watch the movie, I would come out of it with a different conclusion. But it turns out, no, she didn't. But they dubbed her and Lori Petty's voices. I only decided that it was her once I heard her talking. So Because yeah. mm-hmm. at first yeah. I was like, Gina Davis. I was like, oh, no, that's not Gina Davis. But then when she started talking, I was like, yeah. Because I, I made a joke that I was like, I was like, that's good old age makeup, but it's not exactly on like, it's not exactly right for old yeah. Gina Davis. There's not enough sequins and uh, pasties, <laughs> which is a glow joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I feel better about that because it was taking me a minute. And I, I did have a back and forth with Rachel when when we were talking about this because she made a comment about how this is like the most beautiful that Gina Davis ever looked. 
Mm-hmm. And I very jokingly was like, I beg to differ. I've seen season three of Glow where she wears the showgirl <laughs> outfit. Uh-huh. And Rachel was kind of like, yeah, that's a good joke and all. But for real, though, she's gorgeous in this movie. <laughs> yeah, she's super <laughs> gorgeous in this watching movie. watching it, I was like, man. Because, I mean, she's a beautiful lady, but I think there's something in particular about this movie and how she looks in it that is... Well, she suits the 40s like nobody's business. Mm, that's like, probably, yeah. The the dark lip, the, like, Veronica Lake hair, the structured but flowy clothes. Yeah, she would have been she's, Peggy she Carter. She suits the early 40s. Oh, for if, sure. If the MCU was in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, she would have absolutely been Peggy Carter. So we had to do that. that uh, it probably won't be that much fun. What? Cast the MCU for the 90s. Oh, <laughs> I feel like several people did. I feel like that's yeah, been done Yeah, I remember before, there but... was something floating around, because Keanu Reeves was somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Who was it? I don't remember who he was. Well, uh, we did want to talk about a couple other things, and that's a good transition point. I am curious okay. to know what you think about this news with Spider-Man and Disney and Sony. I think these fucking billionaires should stop being babies about it and come to a fucking agreement so that... I don't have to watch Uncle Ben die again. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking so sick of these people. And the, you know what? All The only thing that's going to happen is that Disney is going to buy Sony and then it's going to be an actual monopoly. Uh, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that too many things? <laughs> well, I was like, I realized that I brought this on myself. But <laughs> you, did th- you did this. My issue is they literally <laughs> just set up Spider-Man to be the new Iron Man, the new Tony. He, <laughs> Peter's the new Tony, Spider-Man's the new Iron Man. And now all of a sudden, no, no more. So there's no more Spider-Man in the MCU. What about what we every all the work we just put in? Okay. <laughs> there's a lot happening. <laughs> I think that, that that lag was, I was like, man, this was total whiplash in between these two things. <laughs> Gosh, Gene like, Davis is so pretty. <laughs> fuck Disney and the horse it rode in on. Okay. I started to be like, come on, Kristen. I was like, that's illegal. And you know someone more responsible will step in and, you know, prevent no, it from happening. Won't. And I was like, the fuck if that would ever happen right now? I mean, It's also not technically illegal. A monopoly is, is sure it is. It's not illegal. It's not. It's like anti-capitalist. It's not illegal. I thought that there was, like, I thought it was illegal. I thought that there were because I thought that's what that whole meeting was when Disney bought Fox. There was like this whole government, like they had to had to decide if it could be done. I don't think so. I don't think I made that up. I mean, but. I could be wrong, but I, to my knowledge, there's nothing illegal about being a monopoly. It just stifles creativity. Well. Because nobody can get their shit out if there's yeah. only one big thing. I'm, okay. Th- 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 <laughs> Ultimately, you you answered my question. You said what I was, what I wanted you to, where I was, I was curious who you were angry at, because. I mean, I'm angry at all of them. <laughs> me, well, the same. I'm in the exact same boat, where it was like. You know, I made a joke on Twitter where it was like, cool, now I don't have to care about Spider-Man anymore. Mm-hmm. And that was partially true, but also it, that was the angle you I were, took. You were being glib. Yeah. But my frustration is that currently the MCU is on a winning streak. They're mm-hmm. just knocking things out of the park. And they're bringing Spider-Man into the MCU was so well received that we want to see that continue. Yeah, I also want Tom Holland to keep playing Peter. Yeah. It's the most I've liked Peter Parker since the first Tobey Maguire movie. Yeah, but, well, because he still... He still is, though, correct? I, I thought Sony has yeah, him. but he's not going to be... I mean, so they're, then they're just going to be standalone Spider-Man movies again now. They're not going to be related at all. I don't want that. Well, yeah. Okay, so so that's the second point I was trying to get to. So it's like, on the one hand, I'm like somehow both pro and anti-Disney, because it's like, I also... It, it has been one of, our found, one of the founding principles of this podcast, where we are like, Disney needs to get their fucking mitts off of everything. Like... Yes. So I want Tom Holland's Peter Parker in the MCU, and Correct. I don't care what we have to do 
to do that. I don't care who's who does what. And so I've gone back and forth from being mad at Disney to mad at Sony and to mad at Disney again. And it does, to the best of my understanding, and as it has been explained to me by people that I trust, Disney was definitely being too greedy. And they wanted like 10 times as much profit as they were making on mm -hmm. Spider-Man. And I'm like, that's too much. Here's the thing. My feelings about this are very complicated. It's not just Disney sucks and they're being dicks or Sony sucks and they're being dicks. I think I can think both of those things and also still think that like they could both relax and that we could still have Tom Holland and just like do something. I don't know. There, there's lots of feelings. There's lots of angles about this. There's lots of stuff that we as mere mortals will never know or understand about what goes on behind the scenes. But in my mind, this is just two billionaire babies being like, well, if you don't give me what I want, I'm taking my toys and going home. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's not helpful for anybody, and all you're doing is infuriating <laughs> the entire public. Absolutely. And kind of like I just said, it's like Disney is on this really, really great winning streak right now. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that needs to be noted. However, I truly believe that we are at the point of, if not already past, you know, breaking its integrity from like from like a place of where it started it's like i i i believe that they are making so many decisions now that walt would have never stood by yeah i mean i agree with that too and also it mixed in with all of my other feelings is the feeling that i don't want disney to be a monopoly i what i feel like they're going to be but i don't want them to be because i believe that that stifles the creativity of people and, you know, other production companies. And if Disney is taking all the money and all of the opportunity, then, you know, we won't ever get another Drop Dead Gorgeous or Booksmart or Lady Bird or mm -hmm. things like that. You know, these smaller studios are going to get... Or Little Mermaid up. or Beauty and the Beast or Lion yeah. King, for that matter, because they're going to exactly. be too busy remaking the remakes, you know? And it's exactly. like... Exactly. And that's very, that's very upsetting because while I do love the blockbusters... I also really, really love smaller movies. Like, it's, I have a hard time thinking of, of movies that I want to, like, reference when I get into stuff like this. But, you know, we've talked a lot about the medium movies and how much we love just, like, sort of mid-tier, mid-budget movies. And the problem with Disney owning everything and Disney having its fingers and in all And making purely pies, financial decisions. Yeah, making everybody's financial decisions, essentially. The problem with that is that we don't get those middle tier things anymore. Like, I remember when the Disney Fox deal went through, people were pissed on Twitter. The film people that we follow on Twitter were pissed because they were like, they like absorbed a studio that was under Fox and then they shut it down. Mm hmm. Because And it was a studio that made, like, mid-tier movies. Like, do you know, like, the studios, like, Focus Features mm -hmm. and Summit and stuff like that? Those studios, A24 is, like, the newest one. Those are the studios that we need because they are making the things like Hereditary and Midsummer and The Witch and stuff like that. Like, well, like and those are all horror movies, which I didn't really intend. But well, those type of movies, like, that's the entertainment that I think is more important even given the fact that I do love the huge stuff that Disney comes out with. Yeah. And, and furthermore, uh, you know, this is, this is a blockbuster point I'm going to make, but it's like mm. with the way things are set up now, we're not going to get another Jack Sparrow from Disney. That's too risky. They won't. It's way too. Yeah, you're right. It's way too risky. I mean, to be perfectly frank, looking back on, Tony Stark in the first Iron Man, I don't think we'd we get that yeah, again. No. And Not now. That's where I'm just frustrated because it's like yeah. how I can be, you know, thankful for this thing that gave mm -hmm. me that gave us so much, but also, you know, mad at it for I I I just yeah. Well, it's the thing that you've said before too, where like we've recently gotten more into movies, especially because they're slightly easier to cover for the show, but it was like for a long time you were like I'm not really into movies right now. You were all in on TV. Mm -hmm. And I really think that's that's kind of the the deal. I mean, sure Disney also owns a lot of networks, but within the the networks there's a little more autonomy than there is in the movie studios. And so 
TV is really like the place now, especially with the streaming stuff, because some of these streaming services are not going to get bought. You know, like Amazon's not going to get bought. Mm -hmm. And I don't think Netflix is going to get bought. But well, until Disney Plus is five years. I mean, yeah, who knows? But (laughs) that that's my point is like there seems to be a lot more available available creativity in TV now as opposed to movies. And I think that that's really the bummer because when one company is holding all of the creative keys, like, like Disney holds the keys to 90% of creativity right now. And that is a bummer because having to work with only the palette of that Disney allows you doesn't allow for the world to see the full spectrum of anything. Mm -hmm. And it's a real Pain and a real bummer. Even despite the fact that Disney does still make really good movies, they make and produce and direct really good movies, but it's just there's a lifelessness behind the actual like Disney, Disney, Disney stuff now and that's annoying. It like just makes me bummed out. And it's been within the past 10 years, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I think 10 at the most. I mean, even when I, know, I guess when did Maleficent come out? 2004 or uh, 14. Yeah, I would say even just the last five, because that's the that was the literally the first one where I was like, this doesn't this seems like a a money grab. Well, just a money grab. Wonderland was 2010. Okay, Um. yeah, that one then. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, but that didn't to me, that didn't seem like just a money grab. Maleficent and like the it was Angelina Jolie specifically that made me feel like it was just a money grab because mm-hmm. I was like I don't need it from her perspective in the first place and secondly it, well like, they also just didn't well, okay well we'll get this, yeah. this is yeah we'll get into Maleficent because we are gonna cover the sequel the second com- one yeah, yeah coming out in a couple weeks so we'll get into the first one but uh yeah yeah interesting the thing I was gonna say about this is I also don't believe that. I believe we're in the middle of the story. I don't believe that it's that it's over. Well, sure. And no, that's the thing is there's no way these negotiations are over because Disney doesn't want to lose Spider-Man. Disney and Marvel can't can't lose Spider-Man. I mean, essentially. they could, they can. He, he well, was not on the slate for phase four, but. Well, they think that I saw a rumor that he that that was like part of this. Like that, that's why they didn't announce anything for him. Oh, okay. Because they were still in talks. Okay. So, but I also have seen that they are still in talks. So, I don't know. I literally don't know. Yeah, I don't believe that it's over. I believe that we're still from the middle of the story. But yeah, I, I agree with that. I was really shading Sony for a while mm-hmm. regarding this, and then I've read enough things that made me believe that a lot of what was good about Tom Holland Spider Man was even or was. Sony decisions, up to and including Tom Holland himself. Disney Maybe. wanted that Asia Butterfield kid or whatever. Oh, yeah. I mean, he would have been okay, but he's so... He just... He looks like a Dickensian orphan, and, mm-hmm. like, Tom Holland does not. <laughs> so, okay, well, I was going to tell you a little bit about <laughs> season four of Animal Kingdom. Okay. Uh, because I have watched all four seasons of this show. (laughs) Okay. Is it over? The season is, yes. Okay. How was Emily Deschanel? (laughs) Well, okay. No, she, well, she, I mean, her performance wasn't bad. Okay. But but the character. I've watched all four seasons. You have watched the pilot episode and the pilot episode alone. (laughs) No, I watched most of season one with you. Did you really? I don't remember that. Will quit immediately. I watched, well, maybe not most. I watched at least four episodes. Okay. And, and then I have followed it because I, I, I like know some stuff because I follow people who like it on Tumblr. Mm-hmm. It's apparently a wildly popular show. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand. Because it was picked up for season five and they're like, the Jesus ratings Christ. keep going up. <laughs> that but. is insane to me. So <laughs> I was proud of myself for watching it, for wanting to watch it, because it was it was it came out, I guess, in 2016. And so it was around the time that a lot of these like, you know, uber macho prestige dramas were coming to an end, you know, Breaking yeah. Bad and Sons of Anarchy and stuff. And 
I mean, Walking Dead wasn't coming to an end, but it 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 it, it fancied itself. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it fancied itself one of those. And at the time, you and Will were like all in on them, and more so Will than you. But so I was kind of like, well, I'm going to join them, and yeah, I'm. Gonna- I've been out of I've been out of that <laughs> since the second to last season of Sons of Anarchy. So. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I'm going to watch Animal Kingdom because if I was ever going to watch like a crime family show, it's going to be the one about a you know bunch of hot surfers that's run by Ellen Barkin. Yeah. And so I remember being all excited and kind of like making you guys watch it. And Will was just like, nope, I'm good. He was like, I'm just I'm, I'm good on watching <laughs> people make bad decisions. Like, yeah. And it has stayed just interesting enough at every <laughs> turn for me to keep pressing play until this season. Okay. I had watched some of it and I was really dragging my feet, but I was like, come on, you can do this. And I was, I was excited because Spencer Tree Clark was like just on the show this season. He's been a guest star uh-huh. for a while. And they brought in Emily Deschanel, which I don't have a lot of stake there, but it's like they brought in. Uh, Meanwhile, I've watched every episode of Bones <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> more well, than once. My biggest complaint with the show is I've never liked, with the exception of Ellen Barkin, I've never thought that they have had a, they've treated any of the women interestingly at all. And to be quite honest, it is one of the shows that has a great deal of female writers and directors. Wow. Yeah. Like um, Regina Hall. Oh. She's directed for the show and stuff. But it's like, I just find the female characters, all of them, awful. They're all just like dumb broads or just like in the <laughs> way. And it's the kind of show where they do kill the female love interest to further the male's, you know, story arc and stuff. And yeah. Because it's about this crime family in Southern California. And like, Jay had a girlfriend for like two and a half seasons. And I mean, I thought I hated this actress until I've now seen her in other things, and she's pretty great. But she just was so <laughs> fucking stupid on this show. And she's the one that you thought was going to turn into a Lady Macbeth, and then no, didn't. Oh right? no, no, no! That was Pope's girl. I fucking hate Pope. Oh my god! If anybody watches, he's the one that's um that was in the faculty, right? Yes. Yeah. I feel like Rochelle. Do you watch the show? It feels like one of the shows you would watch. <laughs> so if you do, talk to me about it because I need somebody to talk to about it. But it's like I can't. <laughs> Stand, Pope. Oh my God! <laughs> the, the, my problem with, and I never remember that that actor's name. John Hitosi. What is it? John Hitosi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have such a strange fondness for him because he was in the faculty, <laughs> but I like, I don't like anything else he's ever been in. It's like just... he's a bad guy in everything. He's like off on this show. Like, yeah. Well, he's like messed up in the head, right? Yeah. Yeah. And. He just, like, lumbers around menacing, just, like, glowering and menacing all the time. <laughs> and he had this they, – they were going to rob – it was season two. They were going to rob a mega church, And I was like, this is actually kind of interesting. Yeah. And so he went in and he, they found a mark. She was, like, one of – she worked at the church. And he was getting close to her to find out stuff. And it turns out she had this, like, troubled past with, like, I don't remember what it was. I don't think it was drugs. It might have been gambling. It might have been all of it. Mm-hmm. I don't quite remember. But basically – there was a point where she found out what was going on. And I was like, oh, my God, sweet. She's going to be totally into it. And she's going to mm-hmm. be like, let me help you. <laughs> and she finds out about it. And she was like, you betrayed me. I can never be with you again. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so boring. And yeah, so- that's, I'm not. I can't with that. <laughs> but you you've always I, I, I've I've always explained to you every season kind of what happened. Yeah. <laughs> and like you said, we follow enough people that you know what's going on. But this season was finally so close to losing me because I sat down and I was like, I've probably watched half of the season. And so I went to see if I wanted to catch up. And I was like, I probably missed like three or four episodes. And I looked, and it turns out that I had watched three episodes of a 13-episode run. Why is it 13 episodes? <laughs> it's a 13, yeah, it's a 13-episode season. No. I had nothing else to do, so I put on the next episode, and I slogged through about two of them. I don't know why oh I kept getting play, but I did. And then, God damn it, it got good. <laughs> it got no interesting. Way. I mean, not good, good. Like, I don't think good it, enough, good enough, absolutely good enough. And there was a couple things that happened that I was like, fucking. So Jay, the like teenager one who moves yeah. in with them, 
he had another awful girlfriend. I think she's the third. <laughs> and she was with like a Mexican gang. Okay. And she got mad at him, and I don't remember why. He like either wasn't listening to her, and they got into a fight, and she said he treated her like a maid, but also mm-hmm. she was like living at his apartment, and he was like, bitch, you're fucking my shit up. Clean up after yourself. Mm-hmm. And so then she like got involved with her. She like dumped Jay and got involved with her like cousin or boyfriend or both. I don't remember. But this dude was like acting all macho on Jay. He kept like stepping to him and they they jumped him and stuff. <laughs> and so finally she's like mad. And so they follow the Cody boys on one of their heists. They like figure out what they're doing and they follow them. And the Cody boys, you know, performed the heist and they they successfully they like got away on their on their way out she and her like cousin boyfriend whoever he was <laughs> they like surprised them like jumped them and like kicked their ass and stole all their shit and was like tell your cousin we said hello and so pope is like furious because he thinks jay betrayed them and all this shit a bunch of shit happened but basically is how jay took care of the situation is <laughs> he like went straight to the top of the Mexican. Oh my God. And was like, yo, your girl interfered with us and robbed us. And our two clans or whatever historically have been fine. So do we have beef now or not? And the like king, whatever of this gang pulled in the stupid cousin brother and was like, did you rob him? And he was like, no. And he was like, well, then where'd this necklace come from? And then he just shot him in the head. Oh, (laughs) my God. And then he gave Jay the gun and was like, she's on you to deal with. And so (laughs) she was like doing this thing about how like you and me are the same, Jay, like blah, 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 blah. And then he shot her. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. It was so amazing. (laughs) (laughs) That's actually kind of incredible. I cannot possibly imagine slogging through three seasons to get to that. But it sounds great. (laughs) It was so amazing. I was like, oh, sweet. And that's it. And so like when Jay was leaving with the like Mexican guy he's like so are we good and he like tipped him he like gave him money for like having his back and was like yeah we're good and he's like and also oh because Ellen Barkin has cancer and he's like so he's like so from now on you'll be dealing with me (laughs) oh my god it was so it was so good and so uh, so I was afraid this episode was going to be short and now it's like running long and (laughs) too long (laughs) it's a weird episode but yeah this whole season because I feel like Ellen Barkin was like hard done with this show she might have been yeah well she is now spoiler alert (laughs) (gasps) no god damn it (laughs) now I'm definitely not catching up (laughs) well the whole the whole season was like flashing back to like young Smurf and I found it to be grueling at first and then it actually got really interesting because Klaus the actor who plays Klaus from the originals (gasps) <gasps> yeah he was on it i told you there was i was like you should have watched this season this season was like actually pretty interesting but he was on like four episodes and he was a doomsday prepper <laughs> that's hilarious and deacon lockman she wasn't in the entire season but she's like still alive and kicking it and because she's like did i tell you she's like maybe magic <laughs> You did, yeah. Yeah, you did. She's like maybe a witch, but also she like steals she steals art. Like it's interesting. So Smurf had cancer and she was like gone for half of the season. So they were using these flashbacks so that Smurf was still on the show. Mm. <laughs> and but yeah, so basically she like went to go steal all the gold from basically klaus because he was a doomsday prepper and had like two million dollars worth of gold okay and she was hoping that her and pope were going to be killed in the process okay and pope saved her he like got them out of there (laughs) and so she was so pissed and so she was like trying to make him kill her And everybody was, like, freaking out and screaming. And Ellen Barkin was, like, acting. And then Jay (laughs) shot her in the head. (laughs) Oh, my God. It was crazy. Jesus. And, like, also, meanwhile, Adrian, Spencer Tree Clark, he, like, accidentally became, like, a police informant. And it was this whole thing. Yeah. You told me that part before. And I thought they were going to, because Smurf found out. And she, like, told Darren to kill him. And Darren was, like, okay. Well, he oh. said okay, 
But then she told Jay and she was like, Darren's not going to do it. So you have to. And I was like, God damn it. Jay's going to actually do it. Did he do it? No. Oh, okay. Well, and she's dead now. So I like it ended with they were Darren and Adrian were going to like run away to like, I forget where South America or something. They were going to go somewhere and hide. And then at the last minute, Darren was like, I can't. And so only Adrian went. And so I feel like we'll Mm. see him again, but I don't know. There's going to be another season. So (laughs) what is that even going to look like? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, there's no (laughs) there's no Scott Seedman and no Ellen Barkin now. But yeah, what's the fucking point? I mean, I like Sean Hitosi, but come on. Emily Deschanel, she was she was just so annoying. Like she was Angela. And so she was Jay's junkie mother's best friend growing up. So she was also a junkie. And because it was not, this whole- So she's not related to them at all. No, 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 no. But okay. she like infiltrates and like she kind of tries to take over. And there was this whole subplot of someone's talking to the cops. And so we, of course, know that Adrian is, but we also know that he's not talking about them. He was uh-huh. like spying for another drug dealer or something. Okay. And so I was like, I'd like the eight episode or nine episode mark was like holy shit it's emily deschanel i was like adrian's a red flag and i was like that's why she showed up out of nowhere with like a reduced prison sentence and she's now newly sober and all that stuff and then no she just showed up out of nowhere on a reduced what the fuck she like wanted money from smurf and i was like (sighs) that's not good writing (laughs) so i don't know but (laughs) Yeah, it was. I watched. I like it. your version better. Just <laughs> FYI, <laughs> you have successfully. I was like, maybe we should just try and do like its own segment or its own episode or whatever. Where I, I just explain to you what happened, like secondhand <laughs> season. <laughs> it could work. We could do it. There is one plot that was up in the air that I'm actually really interested in. It was a J plot, and basically he was scamming one of his college friends she was really rich and he was using her mother in order to like commit one of their crimes they were like robbing a show that her mother was like producing at or something okay and she figured out pretty easily too what was happening Mm. and she like confronted him about it and she was like yeah you're actually pretty stupid my dad's pi figured out who you were in like less than 2 days <laughs> and so she's like so you're going to you know fix my grades in college and pay me and i won't expose you <laughs> and i was like oh i kind of like her but then jay goes shot her in the head no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> no not yet <laughs> But he like he basically just went right to the professor and was like, I forget her name. Let's go with Angie. He was like, dude, Angie's totally cheating. She she tried to like bribe me into taking her test for her. And so she got (laughs) expelled and she like came to him and she was like, what the fuck? I'm totally going to like give the information over to cops and you guys are going to be screwed. And he was like, you are in so over your head, sweetheart. (laughs) And he so he like threatened her. But that's where that is. Well, at least it seems like he's learning how to run the fucking business finally. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh, and Craig had a baby. <laughs> Shit. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm at a place now where I'm actually kind of sad. I'm like, it, it, it finally picked up and I would keep watching it, but we'll see. So I guess check back in next summer. <laughs> for, <laughs> for a similarly frantic explanation of season five of Animal Kingdom. This was, this was a weird episode. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Rachel. <laughs> okay. Well, uh. I think that's sufficient. (laughs) Yeah, you know. Do you want to take us out? Yeah, sure. Um, As always, you can follow us on Twitter, at So I'm Watching, Instagram, at So I'm Watching This Show. We're also on Facebook and Tumblr, So I'm Watching This Show. I'm going to have to insist that you put This Used to Be Our Playground on the Spotify playlist. God. (laughs) That's almost (laughs) terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and then other than that, you can rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or YouTube or Spotify or CastBox or Podcast Republic, wherever you listen. Mm -hmm. And that's it for us. Cool. Bye. Bye. Bye.